My name is Alfredo Herrera. I work at uh, BTA Design Services. Uh, for those who know me, if, uh, that don't know me from before, I spent a lot of my time at Nortel. Was lucky enough to make it till the end when I, I was part of the group that was bought out by Ericsson. And uh, I was fortunate to work at Ericsson for a while doing the base station verification. But my, the, the biggest chunk of my work at Nortel was in installing and maintaining the FPGA tools for the corporation. So what I did for the VM is something that I was used to doing at Nortel. Um, uh, well, the topics we'll cover is you know, the why of the VM, the what is the VM, where, when, and who you know, is behind it, and how you go and use it. Uh, just to provide you a little bit of background of you know, my involvement with open source, it doesn't link to a risk foundation, it doesn't link to open source development, it links to IEEE work that I've been doing as a volunteer since 2009. At the top you see uh, that those uh, you know, embedded arrows from left to right, right to left, uh, that uh, show that you know, I was involved in this humanitarian project where there were the IEEE volunteers, we were thinking of creating open source hardware for use in humanitarian projects, development projects, helping people with solar power and things, making that available as open source. And we found out pretty quickly that it wasn't that easy to release industrial quality hardware for people that need to use it in extreme conditions in a way that provides a high quality design and that's something that's usable and that's not gonna create more uh, problems than they try to solve. And that work that I did in early 2009 up to now, you know, it's been quite a while, uh, it's something that it remains with me and that's why I'm so excited about the RIS-5 uh, and, and the ecosystem because now I've seen, you know, from 10 years of uh, looking at this, how industry has evolved, how uh, academia has evolved and how now it is possible to have high quality hardware available so that you know the Ericsson's and of this world can use them and also people that are you know have these altruistic uh, ambitions uh, for open source hardware so it is possible now so we have that model and yes you see here uh, early 2000s was very exciting times for uh, development you know we had the Arduino we have Eclipse Foundation, uh, we have Fab Labs, Creative Commons, all of that work, you know, all that's a lot of volunteers, you know, out there trying to make this work. Uh, some EDA tools that are open source, like KiCad for uh, PCB, NG Spice, very later, uh, that are available for people to try out, you know, at design, doing do, do, uh, hardware. Uh, RISC V Foundation was in 2015 that it was crea created, 2014, 2015 and now the open hardware group that we're experiencing. Now that you have a bit of the background of my motivation and how I have been involved, about the VM, what do you have? So uh, I've been telling a few people that I call it like a throwaway environment. It is a virtual machine so that it installs on your machine and it's, uh, it's contained within this you know, executable that, that runs your, your image. And if you don't wanna use it anymore, if it doesn't, do what you want, you can you know, get rid of it and no harm done. But if you're interested in using it for some real product, you can use whatever was useful within that VM and use it on your own environment and grow it into you know, uh, scripts and using industry level uh, uh, tools. So uh, it is meant to make it easier for you here today at this hands-on session to you know, just don't, don't worry about the tool chain, just install this thing and then just get it up and running. And then get familiar with the tool chain and everything, all the steps that are needed uh, to do a software, you know, that runs on the RIS-5. My intention at the re beginning was to create also the hardware tool chain, but unfortunately I was too ambitious to get it done in a month. <laughs> uh, so that I'll have to wait for a, a later release. But uh, it has the uh, very later tool installed but the RT RTL and the old verification is not there yet, so don't look for it, it's not there. Um, so yes, it's a virtual machine, it's, it's pre-configured with the RIS-5 tool chains so that you can study, configure, as preferred, modify, and physically implement it. Uh, and it's, uh, I've released my scripts on the GitHub under a permissive Apache 2.0 license. That means that you can 
you know, modify it, use it. You don't need to, the, you know, uh, pay me any royalties for my company. It's yours to play with. So what is not part of the VM? So it's not a fully feature uh, development environment. It's not intended for to create and generate a product that you'll you know, sell. It's not bug free, as you know. It's not supported by a dedicated team. Uh, I hope that we'll get some support uh, through the, uh, the community, but uh, as of now, it is me. And uh, some Yona was uh, very helpful in getting this up uh, and running. And it's not guaranteed to work out of the box. It requires some tender love and care, uh, and care right? But uh, it is a start. And the goal is to get it to a point where you know, we can evolve it over the next few months to get it to a point where it's more than just good enough. It is actually usable for real projects, small projects. Uh, um, it has a Ubuntu install. It's 18.04 uh, LTS. I was thinking of using a Red Hat because that's what you use at work. But uh, some of the tools and things didn't work on that. The installers didn't run well. It's a small virtual machine. It, uh, I wanted it to be under five gigs of download for the OVA. Uh, that's where I spent most of my time compressing and deleting stuff so that it would make it. Uh, only uses four gig of RAM, which is I I that was you know I picked the number so that you know most people would be able to run it on their machines, and it has two CPUs because of the uh, to take advantage of the multi-threading that uh, Eclipse uses and in, in, uh, for some of the tools, but you could have more. You can configure that. Uh, the uh, the hard disk that is mapped there is uh, dynamic, means that it can grow up to 20 gigs. Uh, but uh, now it's, it, it doesn't use all of that space on your laptop right now. Uh, the one caveat is that once it's running in, in a virtual box, it's going to reserve that much space on your hard disk. So if, you, if you're running out of space in your hard disk and you're trying to install it and you don't have the 20 gigs, you just have like 10 it probably won't be able to install. So if you see problems like that, like I've had to delete some files to make room for the VMs when I was trying to multiple multiple versions. Um, it has a PDF reader. It's how you install events in there. So if you need to look it up some, so that you don't go to the hassle of trying to find a way to read PDFs. And it has a little web browser links too, which is a text-based one. So no Firefox, no nothing fancy there, but at least you ha you can you know, navigate uh, web uh, websites. Uh, NGVIM, which is what I used to test the X11, uh, the uh, the GUI in the environment. Uh, the user is root uh, and also a user, and the password is ABC123, as you know. Uh, you can change that. I recommend that you change it later, so if you so that you don't have a you know easy targeted. You're not a target of uh, any hacking or something on your system. Don't make it vulnerable. Um, and uh, as you know, they, they has all these different tools installed in there. So uh, who? It's BTA. And uh, if you have comments about which uh, logo or icon you prefer for the uh, virtual machine, let me know. And you know we can pick one or the other if you have any feedback on that. Uh, it's a better release that you have now. Uh, the plan is to have a release one. Uh, once uh, you know, I complete a project with Sengen and on the you know and make a, a webinar on that and uh, doing a trial probably with a, one of the industry sponsors that they have. Uh, and then the, I hope to I, I'm planning on having intermediate releases as we fix bugs up to next year uh, when we'll have release two of the VM and it will be more usable at the time. So I count on your feedback for improvements. Do not hesitate to communicate any bugs or things you don't like about it, because that's the only way that it can get better. Um, and uh, it's available on the, on the open hardware group uh, GitHub right here. And um, yep, that's what I have. So thank you so much. And I think we have some extra time for networking and for the break. Thank you so much.